uh, you know, he, he was in the original Winnie the Pooh production. Anyway, I was uh, lying on the lion because uh, it was people in costumes. It was Timothy the mouse. And he was the most valued best friend. But he was a lion, so I was lion. And that was my introduction. First. And I'm still stuck here at Disney. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be here. Well, you've done so many phenomenal characters. There's so many characters for us, as most of our audience probably knows. Um, but you've done a lot of new characters as well as some sound-alike characters. But I thought what we'd do, and I think you guys are going to enjoy this, is we're going to do a speed round oh, of voices. Yeah. Right? Can I have some water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Never mind. There it is. I was trying to get out of it. <laughs> no, you can do this. Here we go. Um, let's start with one of my favorites in the speed round. Um, this is a, one of your more recent voices in our original. We're going to start with the original characters. Um, but really, this should be one of my favorites. Ray from Princess and the Frog. Well, you know, all I can tell you is that the women love a man with a big bad pouch. <laughs> and Zummy Dummy. Oh, I, 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 can, uh, uh, I can't remember any uh, 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 words. <laughs> Dark Moon Dot. Oh, the tower Say it with me. I am Dot! Thank you, thank you. All right, we just saw the Lion King clip real Ed from the Lion King, the original Lion King. Ooh. <laughs> he was a really intelligent guy. <laughs> All right, another original, Bonkers T. Bob. Oh, Dr. Steve Bobcat, he was the first student detective. Although he could never get up out of his shell, he didn't have very much to say. Okay. <laughs> Don Carnage. Don Carnage. You know, if I was not already me, I would envy you because you get to meet me. <laughs> He's a very humble guy. Yeah. From uh, Rusty Rangers, the Fat Cat. Uh, it's Fat Cat. It's my bargain basement zero mustel. Okay, now any uh, Walt Disney World fans? Okay, for years there were reflections of Earth, and every time you watch reflections of Earth at Epcot, you heard this guy. What do you sound like? As we gather around the campfire, <laughs> we all sit in Papa Squat together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aladdin, Razul. Oh, you must be friends with the street rat. How lovely for you. <laughs> we'll do one more from Hercules, Nessus, the uh, kind of the centaur guy. Okay. Yeah, well, that was my bad Jack Nicholson. Thanks for bringing it up. Give me the blues. Unbelievable. Jim Cummings, come on. Sound a lot here, because you know, it's unfortunate when um, one of our classic voices passes away. Um, certainly, uh, we will, as a company, we have to continue the legacy of those characters. So Jim has been amazing at duplicating some of our most um, difficult voices. Um, so let's go through a, a couple of them here. Uh, Getting J, J. Pat O'Malley from Walt Stays did the voice of Colonel Haughty. So what do you say? We put one foot in front of the other, my dear boy. Ha, two, three, ha! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, how about uh, also from the Jungle Book, the, one of my favorite characters, we've had a lot of fun with this guy, the Louis Prima, King Louis. Ford. Yes. Well, you know, I'm the king of the swingers, world, the jump of the IP. Please don't make the world fun of me. I better not sing this whole song. Rich man can't take off the window. Recently, King Triton passed away, Ken Mars, and so you can fill in for Ken. God bless. Let's see what's going on. Ariel! <laughs> and then uh, Paul Winkler. Billy comes running out here now. That's right. <laughs> it's not my fault. Um, Paul Winkler was too. Oh, don't be ridiculous. It's only because I'm an excellent boxer. <laughs> <laughs> and then 
Okay, and then we got to do the most famous one that you do. He does actually three characters, Sterling Holloway, but the voice of Winnie the Pooh. Oh. Well, I would very much like to help you operate, but I'm sorry. You see, I don't have any honey. <laughs> Day, and uh, one of those was the Cheshire Cat, which is very much like Winnie the Pooh, except. except that he had a little sort of a thing where I don't know if we should go this way or <laughs> perhaps that way. And yes, he's crazy. <laughs> and then, and then one more from Sterling sort of Holloway, of course, was um, a cop from the Jungle Book. He just says Sterling Holloway with a list. Trust in me, <laughs> just in me. You're all under my power. <laughs> uh, and one more, and that is um, the nemesis that our standard characters have always faced since really the original Steamboat Billy Cartoon, and that is Pete. <laughs> Well, there you go again, bringing up my shady past. I thought I'd put that behind me. Well, it's uh, back there anyway. So she gets an answer, so these uh, are, are famous what we call the Fab Five characters, uh, Mickey Donald, Goofy, Pluto, um, and Minnie. Um, I think it might be really fun to be some of those guys. So, uh, it's a good Yeah, so, um, of course, was, uh, Pete was Goofy's next door neighbor, so we might as well bring out Bill Farmer. <laughs> You don't know how it affects the, the people out there, but with an event like this, we get to hear how it affects you. And uh, it's just heartwarming, it really is. It's awesome. Awesome. And we joke around about movies antics. Can you, can you share any fun in studio stories? 
since we're here, conversation. Oh my gosh. It's all about being in the recording studio, which is what we all do together. Yeah. Bill is kind of, and, and his wife's here someplace, Jen, um, she knows that he is a living goofy. Yeah. <laughs> in real life. And Bill has a with this. Yes, yeah, yeah. The yeah. curse. So the goofy curse. So any, any fun stories there in the studio of the goofy curse? Well, uh, yes, I remember once I was in the studio and I had a Coca-Cola. And I went to set it down, and I got it just on the edge of the table, and it started falling. And I hit it, trying to grab it, and I hit the neck, and it started spinning <laughs> over maybe a hundred thousand dollar mixing board. Oh. The engineers are going, ah! you know? And that's just a typical example. I remember when you came into a room and you came up to me, and you were dressed nice for an executive meeting and everything, and I went, oh! And you're going, oh my god. You know, that and uh, I was like, you didn't know I was you know, that one. We were doing a goof troop and we were in this place called Fidelity Studios and it was in sort of a, a box shape, sort of a key yeah. shaped uh, room. And all of our mics were up on booms and they're right over there and they, they do this number. And Billy came in and he turned around and, and he turned around and he whacked the one mic and smacked into the next one. <laughs> and all of the mics fell. <laughs> And he gave us a yuck, and it was okay. Yeah, it was. I was the yuck Oh, the yuck? Oh, the yuck? Oh, the yuck? Oh, the I'm waiting for a policeman to pull me over and say, Lord, you're goofy. And then one, one thing that you didn't do in your original audition back in 86. 86, 86 yes. Um, was, uh, you, we didn't know that you could do the goofy yell, you know, whenever a goofy falls off a mountain. Um, okay, that was actually, yeah. Uh, Pinto Polk, they didn't do that. It was a guy named Hans Scholl in the Art of Skiing back in 1947. And if I do it, it's, it's always loud, but I always have to do this twice for the engineers. Once, I said, this is loud. Yeah, all right. And I'll do it. Awesome. Well, hey, Tony, of all, all the talent that we have here today, and we've got some more people coming, by the way, um, Tony, you have been doing the voice of long. It's 37 years. <laughs> And, the, and you actually learned to do the voice in Clarence. So how did that relationship start? How was that partnership? Well, I was uh, animating on Mickey's Christmas Girl, traditional animator. <clears throat> and um, voices was a fun thing for me, but I was focused on animation. And I, he, Clarence was always on the lot. And I saw him and said, how do you do the voice? And he uh, showed me, and I couldn't do it. Because now was a voice I couldn't do. But I thought it would be fun. I wasn't thinking of a career. But, uh, and he showed me how to do it, and I couldn't do it, and I played with the voice on my own in the car and at home. And one day it kind of kicked in, and the next time I saw him, I said, is this right? And he, he gave me a look, and I thought, oh, I hope I didn't offend him. <laughs> <laughs> but the next day he came into my room in the uh, animation building where I was animated, and he said, okay, well, if, if Donald was in this situation, what would he say? Or if Mickey says this, what would, what would Donald say? Say this, try to say that, and I thought, okay. <laughs> but I didn't know there was succession involved. And I, that went on for three years, uh, and it got more intense as time went on. And uh, it wasn't really until the end, and I think in hindsight it's because he was making sure that I would do a good job, and that I would be loyal to it, and that I would uh, take care of the ones. So, what well, <laughs> So what was the best advice? What was the best advice that Clarence gave you? Um, the interesting thing is, it was the same advice that all the nine old men gave me for animation, as far as character integrity. Uh, it was all the same advice because it all came from Walt. And the first part of it is everything you get, do the very best job you can because it's going to be around long after you're dead with your name on it. <laughs> and plus it in some way, figure out a way to make it better. Uh, the second part uh, of character integrity, this came from Frank and Ollie, really, 
they would say, think of somebody that you care about really a lot in your life, like a, a cousin or a teacher or your grandfather. Now suppose you saw your grandfather and he came in and he said, Hey, don't suck on me. You'd go, who are you and what are you telling my grandfather, right? And if you had a different voice, hey, dude, what's up on me? It's a lie and you don't trust it anymore. So it's about retaining the integrity of the voice and the way the character looks, the way the character walks, what the character says and what he does not say is just as important. And uh, the last thing was the voice doesn't come from your mouth, it doesn't come from your vocal cords, it doesn't come from your diaphragm, it comes from your soul. And if the voice isn't coming from your soul, if it's just coming from your mouth, you're just doing an imitation. Mm -hmm. But um, is there anybody who has a birthday today? Get some close. Over here, get a pink sweater. There you're easy to see. What's your name? Sharon. Sharon. Okay. Get your phone ready. You got your phone on? Uh, okay. So Tony and these guys have been so gracious. I've got five kids, and they they're all adults now. But growing up, I had like I said, I had the best job in the world. They would have the characters call them on their birthdays all the time, and um, you know uh, they would call us elves from Santa's workshop sometimes. Who knows? But um, this is going to be a very special thing. Sharon, is that right? Yeah. Okay, take it right. Okay, so you got your cell phone ready? Put it on video mode. Okay, here we go. <laughs> You're going to get a special greeting, special birthday message from Donald Duck and the rest of the gang. So, um, so Tony, you can start this out. You guys come in on the last. Sharon, right? Sharon, right? Okay, here we go. Hey, come on close. Okay, hey, Thank you, it's my 25th. 25th birthday! <laughs> Here we go. Ready, Anne. This is your special character greeting. Absolutely, and, and I always reference, there's a great interview with Wayne Barusi where um, Leonard Malton asked him kind of a similar question, like how do you, has the character influenced you at all? And, and they so eloquently expressed that over time, you kind of just develop a symbiotic relationship with the character without even knowing it, and, and the character influences you. And, you know, Mickey is such an optimistic leader, he's this, you know, little personality, like Walt said, a little personality assigns the purpose, the purpose of laughter. You know, he's, he's just trying to make people happy and smile and kind of give some light to otherwise, you know, crazy lives. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I think definitely he's taught me to be a little bit more optimistic, to maintain a, a curiosity, which, you know, it's, it's often said Walt was making if he was Walt, and that's something about Walt that I've admired for so long, is just his, his curiosity and his drive. And so um, I find myself referencing that a lot in, in different creative pursuits and um, different relationships. So definitely, he is, Mickey has influenced me probably more than I even realize. You know, for going on 35 years, Rick has been the captain of this ship and he's held it together. I think it would be fair to say that none of us would be here if it weren't for Rick. Absolutely. And Rick has a gift of not only being a great administrator and a leader, but creative. And that's rare. Some people are one or the other. The only other person I can think of that I've known that had both was John Hahn, who was just made a legend. So you're next. Oh. <laughs> um, so, I want to bring out one more very special guest. And as, as many of you know, Lucy Taylor, who was the incredible voice of Jimmy Mouse since 1987, um, passed away in 2019. And uh, I'm some of the, the voice for pretty daunting tasks. So, um, we're very, very fortunate to find um, an actress with the amazing ability to simulate Lucy's voice as many and uh, give the character all that wonderful many heart. Um, we'd like to officially introduce you to her today. So, everyone, please welcome the voice of Minnie Mouse. It's kind of her premiere. She's been doing the voice for a while, but I don't think she's ever been in an audience like this before. It's Caitlin Robrock. <laughs> It's, um, I want to ask the obvious question here of you, um, but what's it like being such an iconic, endearing, and beloved character of these last couple of years? It is the greatest joy of my life, and I mean that ever so sincerely. I love Disney and, and the music and the colors and the princesses and Minnie for so long that to know that I'm being privileged to carry on this legacy, is, it still surprises me to this day. Like, I still... I can't believe, oh, I'm just so happy to be here and be someone that can keep this character alive and happy and, and giving to you as much as she's given to me throughout the years. So we're going to have to give us a little bit of the now, so I might as well just get that out of the way. The elephant's in the room. Let's hear it. And they say, like, oh, this isn't a callback, this is the 
thinking they didn't tell you? <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Why would I sign paperwork and a callback? So, anyway, they should have been. The writing was on the box. I couldn't read it. And you go in, and there was so many people in the room all watching. And like, oh, okay, here we go. Better talk the talk. And we, we did a couple of things that were coming out that season, and I thanked everybody profusely, and I gracefully exited, and I drive home, and I call my agent, and she's like, hi, sweetie. Oh, I didn't tell you? Yeah, you got it! Hi, Are you seeing me? This wasn't anything like I thought. I'm going to treat myself to a fancy dinner and be a fancy TV show. That was mine. That was for me. But ever since that first day, it's been a, a joy and a blessing every single time I go into the booth. Singing is such a big part of what the characters do, so uh, we thought it'd be fun to perform a little traditional song. Would that be fun? Yeah. Um, the Disney Music Group recently released an album, if you want to get it, it's called um, it's a bunch of classic standard songs, and it's called Mouse Pack, which is a playoff of the Rat Pack, and it contains a bunch of old standards. So um, what I'd like um, to do is have you folks take a listen to the song, of, uh, it's called Friendship. And so if we get the mic stands, or not the, uh, I'm sorry, the music stands out here. Let's use the mic stands. Let's bring those music stands out here. And we're going to give you what the characters sound like singing friendship. Hey, here we go. All right. All right, they've never done this live before, so this is going to be something. <laughs>
I think it's only appropriate to bring out the person who really kicked off things with their fin for what we call a sexual orientation. Having voiced a number of Disney characters, she sounds something like this. Okay, bye bye now. Bye bye. <laughs> is, there, is everybody gone? <laughs> huh? Oh my gosh, my cheeks are killing me. Professor, I think you're getting a little too much free will. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, you all know that voice. Job done, and 
learn how to virtually do work on Zoom with everybody's faces on the screen. So that was crazy. But um, and then as soon as the world opened back up, like in July 21, it's been uh, been gone pretty much every week since then. So it's been good. It's been awesome. You know, get to travel, get to meet people, do concerts, symphonies, and conventions, and then we get to record with the boss over here. So that's a lot of fun. We have a blast. Yes, we do. We do. Tons of fun. Lots of fun. So speaking of fun, okay, we're going to try this. We're going to play oh. the emoji game. Ooh. Okay. Game. So, you know, now you have to sing this lyric. Okay. 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 Are we all ready? So can you figure that out? We'll put that up. Can I figure this out? I'll give you a hint on the first one. It's what? What would I... Oh. 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 What would I give if I could live out of these waters? Oh, that's my song. Part of D23. <laughs> I was up at 3 a.m. shooting in front of the attraction at 6 a.m. before the rope dropped, so <laughs> I had a lot of sleep. Sorry, I put that one together. I thought you did pretty good, right? I tested those out on my wife to see if she could figure them out, and she said, Matt, this makes no sense. <laughs> Very <laughs> Um, so, uh, everybody knows you for Ariel, but you've, you know, as we've heard in the clips, you've got Barbie, which is just amazing. Her, her Barbie, but how can I find this picture Barbie and Ariel? Yeah, exactly. What is it? It's crazy. I mean, it really, it's just all the people at Pixar, we just had a box of Barbies, and it was one of those freaky things where I did an audition for it, you know, and they called me like, you're going to start working on this thing for Barbie, and be the first voice of Barbie for a Toy Story that Mattel was given permission. Of course, they asked for, you know, for Mattel to be part of Toy Story, the original. And they said, no, Barbie's not going to be in a cartoon. <laughs> and then they saw how successful it was. And Toy Story 2, then Mattel's like, can Barbie be in Toy Story 2? <laughs> Does that offer still happen? <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so we had a box of Barbies, and they called, and they were like, we want you to be Barbie. I'm like, I, can I audition? Do you want me to do something? No, no, we, we know Barbie's in there. I'm, I'm like, so glad you know she's in there, because I don't know how the heck I want to find her. But we just played with Barbie dolls. And literally, I know, this isn't our job. And so we did. We said, like, hey, what would she sound like? Well, I don't know. And, and so the directors are talking to me with their dolls. And <laughs> you think I'm making this up. This is true. I'm not making this up, I promise. And so we kind of went, and they were like, there. There, there she is. I'm like, what? <laughs> yes, yeah, so we had a lot of fun on that project. Lots and lots of fun. I love her. I love that character. Um, and we watched all of Canada, some very exciting things happen. And that would be... <laughs> We're talking about that. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. No, that's right. We're still friends. Um, so, yeah. I just, so, oh, no, it's totally fine. Yeah. So, there's like a little, it's totally fine. I love you. We've worked together for 36 years. So, we started Disney character voices right when Ariel birthed. Yes. Her name came out. Um, yeah, I have a little book, and it's not an autobiography, it's not a memoir. You're very sweet. It is not, it's, it, I never wanted to write a book in a million years. Um, and, um, yeah, so I share some stories behind the scenes. And Susan is the one that she, I talked six months ago. I'm like, okay, Jody, when you push the book, can you stop saying I didn't want to write a book? It's not a memoir. It's not a book. Because I don't have any wisdom to share. Yeah. I'm not true. Okay, so she is the one that convicted me. She's like, listen, you have stories about Howard Ashton. And if you don't share those stories about Howard from Smile, which I did a show with Howard, and she yeah, and then that I did a mermaid with him, and she is the one that convicted me. She said, listen, if you don't share those stories about Howard, they're going to be lost forever. So, anyways, it's not an autobiography. It's a little... Uh, you never want to be an author. You never want to be an author. Uh, sharing some lovely stories where I shine the light on other people. So I get to shine the light on Howard, on Disney, on the Broadway community, my family, my friends, voice teacher, just people that have affected my life and, and this man right here. So. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday.
Okay, is that close up to her? She says, we're going there? <laughs> I thought she knew what she was going to So Susan. Oh, no, 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 it's your turn. <laughs> How are you? I'm so good. Nashville girl now. Thanks yeah. from Nashville. Nash. What are you doing in Nashville? Music City, baby. Yeah. I love it. Yeah? Are you involved in any of their music wise? <laughs> I can follow it there. <laughs> producing wise. I'm producing for this little company. It's an upstart, um, but I'm really excited about it. It's called Disney. <laughs> <laughs> so my friend and I, um, I became involved in a little tiny show that used to play in a basement at 54 Below in New York, and it just kind of caught on. And it was a what if. What if all the Disney princesses were together on stage singing a bunch of songs in a 21 and older club? And, um, and it became a hit. We, we traveled around a little bit sort of developing it, but we knew the only upper mobility would be to call Disney ultimately. And we really thought, okay, we want to play with symphonies, but we got to get the rights now to the music. And so I'm going to make this phone call, guys, and we're like, this will never happen. And then it absolutely happened, and we got to, um, we are the very first partnership of Disney Concerts, my company, called Broadway Princess Party. And, uh, yeah. And we signed a contract with, with Disney Music on um, March 5th of 2020. <laughs> Groups gathering together, singing in each other's faces, painting <laughs> pieces on a stage, blowing horns. Yeah, it was not. So we pivoted um, because we knew the first thing coming back would be smaller stage groups. And so we recorded an orchestra in Nashville. Uh, and we are on a 100 city tour right now. We played 60 cities and we go back on the road next month in October. We've got 40 more cities. And um, that's, what, that's what we're doing. Yeah, that is very, very glad. This is the 25th anniversary of the show. Yeah. 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 So, so Meg is so different from, um, really Which of these ladies doesn't fit on these pictures? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a beef with you, Rick. <laughs> Um, Meg isn't a Disney princess, um, which people seem to feel the need to remind me in the comment section of my Instagram. Um, and yet, you know, Meg's song was on all those Disney princess CDs, Duke. You have a coronation for Raya, and I'm just waiting, you know, maybe two years from now. Heroines, I had to do this whole thing because you were here. <laughs> so I actually, I actually at my concert, I do something called um, a Disney heroin medley, but the guy who copied the charts only wrote heroin medley. <laughs> But you're also quite famous for uh, actually premiering Bell on Broadway. So, Meg and Bell are so completely different. Did you, it, was there ever a time you had? Yes. Yeah, so they were auditioning for, for Meg for Hercules, and they actually I was doing I was playing Bell at the time on Broadway, and they wouldn't let me go to the audition because um, it wasn't you, you wouldn't let me go anyway. I, it was the, really the only time. I was the super squeaky wheel, and I'm like, please, please, please. Meg was likened as Barbara Stanwyck in The Lady Eve. And like, I've seen every Barbara Stanwyck, every Joan Crawford, every Betty Davis, every Lauren McCall, and that whole cadence of speaking of, you know, if you need me, just whistle, you know how to whistle, don't you? You pump her up your lips and blow. Like, it's what I was born in the wrong era. And they finally let me audition, and um, it was all the same people that had done Beauty and the Beast. And when you audition, it was just true for you ladies, where you go in the room and they're like, hi, nice to see you, and then they put their heads down. And they're looking at a picture of the character, um, and you just read the character into a microphone, and one by one their heads came up, and they're like, Susan, I, I was trying to tell you, when I was Belle, I'm acting. <laughs> <laughs> Meg is right where I live. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
lines. You have to laugh, add a little lot of lines. Um, yeah, especially with Jim Woods. I mean, he never stopped talking. That whole bed, bed, the little bed, the little nut, bed, the little, you know, like that was just, I'm like, I'm looking in the booth, I can't get a word in it. <laughs> yeah. So fun, so great. We will pull some of those clips together and just watch it quickly. It just brought back all these memories of how wonderful that character is. So, so congratulations. 25 years. <laughs> Well, then, I'm just going to go down the line. We've got Nick and Tony Rose here. Oh. 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 We're going to have some fans out there from Princess and the Frog, right? Oh. So, Anita, you were, you know, all this fame on Broadway and Dreamgirls, and you were an obvious choice for Tina, right? It was a piece of cake audition? It was a, a piece of... Not cake, three auditions. <laughs> <laughs> the second audition I was called for, and I was doing a job in Australia. And I was flying out to Australia, and they were like, yeah, so we need you to come back for your call back. And it was like two days after I arrived in Australia. <laughs> so I flew to Australia, which was 100 hours, and I shot for a day. And I packed my bag, and I jumped back on the plane, and I got back to L.A., and I rolled out of bed, and I came in and did this audition. And I, I think I might have been tired, but I didn't know it, because more importantly to me was that I was getting this home. <laughs> so it didn't matter where I was. It didn't matter how tired I was. I was coming to get this role. And it was, it was amazing, but it was three times. And then I saw Randy Newman, this is gonna sound like a humble brag, but it actually is what happened. So I was performing at the Oscars. I was a casual performance at the Oscars for Dream Girls. And Randy Newman was there, and I was like, <laughs> because I had already had like two auditions and I wanted to say something but I didn't know what to say and I didn't want to mess it up and I didn't want to be too eager but I didn't want to act too cool either and I didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> so I casually said hello and I was like, oh my goodness, so nice to see you here. Did I get that wrong yet, please? <laughs> didn't say that part, kept that to myself. But it took months. It took months and then you know, you would hear who was auditioning while you were waiting, which is always fun. <laughs> you like that. Um, but you know, ultimately, you're auditioning against yourself. You're not auditioning against that other person. You're not auditioning against that other name because you don't know what they're doing in that booth and they don't know what you're doing. So you're auditioning against yourself. And I loved that character so very much. And I knew from the moment I read it, I said, oh no, this, this is me. This, this is actually me. I grew up in a small town. I had a dream. I needed to get out of that space. I didn't have people saying, oh, here's a path for you, let's help. No, it was me. Um, and so that was the determination in that space. And, and I loved her from the first page. And I'm just so happy that it worked out. Well, I'm not Well, they all do, but Nikki deeply cares about this character, and she's the one, she will call me um, if I'm giving direction in the booth, like, hey, why don't you try this? She'll say, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she knows her character well, so it's fantastic. Yeah, she's so good, so good. Um, what are the similarities between you and Tiana? You kind of shared that a little bit, didn't you? Yeah, I think there's a real determination. There's a go get them quality. Um, I think that for a while I was very much all work and very little play and I released that um, because I love to play and likes to show. Um, I, I think you're both big dreamers and from small spaces and found ways to be, to, to inhabit the dreams that we had in our spirit. and. Um, and I was really grateful to be able to bring that to her um, and to show that to young girls and boys and grown girls and boys who need to remember that dreams are still active. 
um, even when you're a grown up. Um, so it's a really, there, there are a lot of similarities. It always catches 
me off guard because I'm used to hearing my own voice. So I, I don't really think of it like that. But someone will be like, I'll be in line behind someone and they'll whip around and look at me. And sometimes they're confused because they thought they knew me and then they don't. And other times they're like, You're Jasmine. And people really, when they know, they go. Yeah. Well, I'm Jasmine, uh, Linda, Disney legend, pretty cool, right? Uh, I got a little bit of a beef here because, you know, Jody's a Disney legend, um, the Little Mermaid, okay, so her character Ariel is the Little Mermaid, um, Anika, Princess, and the Frog, she is the Princess, Princess Tiana. There's no mention of Jasmine in the title of you know, the movie. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's because it's actually called Aladdin. Water. <laughs> I didn't even know. That'll be ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Real 
Greg, you've made one of my childhood dreams come true. Yeah, I'll say you can talk about it. You want to go get you a water, too? So Donnie, you know, that people know Beanie Wong did the voice of Shang in Mulan, but he came in and, and did the scene. How did that all happen? I mean, how did you end up being the voice of this iconic song? Which, by the way, I looked it up just the other night. Make a Man Out of You is, is one of the top five asked for songs of all Disney songs. Well, I was, uh, I was starring in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream. I was in Chicago and I got a call from Pam Coates, the producer. And she said, would you like to be in a Disney film? And I said, let me think about it. Okay. <laughs> and little did I know this would become a classic, right? Yeah. So I said, well, I've got two days off, Sunday and Monday. She said, can you fly into Los Angeles and record it? So I flew in on Sunday, recorded it Monday. And as you all know, it takes a long time for it to release. And years later, I went to the premiere. It was at the Hollywood Bowl. I had my children there, my wife sitting next to me. And I remember when Captain Shane came on this island, 12 story uh, screen, and he started singing. My voice was coming out of this Captain Shane. But people started applauding at the end of it. And my son Brandon turned to me and said, Dad, you have now finally made it in show business. <laughs> They sang a song that Dad Dance blew them away. Dad Dance sang my brother's song, blew them away. It kept going back and forth. It was like an attraction on Main Street. <laughs> Walt found out about it. And they sang for Walt. And he put him on a couple of television shows. And that's where Andy Williams' father saw it. And it took off from there. And I joined when I was five. Oh, actually, actually. Uh, I have a couple more. Can I just say a couple more stories? Yeah. This, this Disney is 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 my my life. You're gonna like this one. Back in the day, when Walt created an attraction, we didn't have social media. We didn't have any, everything that we've got now. So what he did to launch an attraction, he made a television special. And uh, Kurt Russell was the star of it with the Osmond Brothers. And the, the attraction was the Haunted Mansion. I'm 11 years old. I'm still in school, obviously. So they need to find a place for me to have school. There was a room, I think it was in the second floor of the Haunted Mansion, that wasn't being used. They made that into a school room. I think I'm the only person who can say the Haunted Mansion was my schoolhouse. Listen, awesome. I wish we had about another hour, but I know we're going to get together. Okay. So, we're going to do something really special. We are going to have Scott and Linda stick around just to celebrate the 30th anniversary real quick. We're going to have an ADR scene from the film Aladdin. So, if I could get the two of you to step over to the microphone. It would be a pleasure. Come on. Actors have to match a scene that already has been animated 
And we've chosen the rooftop scene for Scott and Dad, so let's keep our fingers crossed. They never do this together. We always do this in the studio alone. But it's when we have to replace maybe a line in the movie and we have to try to match the lips. So it's, it's normally uh, it's challenging just for one. We're going to raise the bar, and we're going to try this with both of them. So all I'm going to do is wish you guys luck. <laughs> so we're going to try to stay in sync, and if it doesn't stay in sync, that's okay. We'll forgive them, right? All right, so here we go. Let's play the film. This is the scene, the rooftop scene from Aladdin with Scott Meyer, Linda Larkin. Here we go. Whoa, whoa. Watch your edges. Careful. This is where you live? Yep, just me and a boo. Come and go as we please. That sounds fabulous. It's not much, but it's got a great view. Wow, the palace looks pretty amazing, huh? I wonder what it'd be like to live there, have servants and valets. Oh, sure. People who tell you where to go and how to dress. <laughs> it's better than here. You're always scraping for food and ducking the guards. You're not free to make your own choices. Sometimes you feel so you just trapped. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, where are you from? Really? How come? So come on, Donnie. Donnie. 